Greetings. In this lesson, we're going to talk about limits. We're going to use both uh, a numerical and graphical approach. Um, we, when we discuss the concept of a limit, um, the discussion that we're going to have is very intuitive. So if you find that it may be quote unquote easy or obvious, you're correct. Um, it definitely relies on our prior uh, relies on our prior experience and certainly lacks formal proof uh, of what's happening. So let's take a look at the linear function 3x minus 1. So here is a table of values associated with the function. So notice when I'm taking the values of x, um, I'm approaching from the left side and the right side, numbers that are close to six, okay? So when I plug in those values into my function from the left and from the right respectively, what number are we approaching? Well, it's obvious that as we get closer to six from the left here, and as we get closer to six from the particular right, we are approaching 17. This leads us to the definition. As x approaches a, so as x is approaching a particular number, the limit of the function is written as follows. The limit as x approaches a of our function is equal to a specific number. So we would say in this particular example, that as x approaches 6 of 3x minus 1, our limit is 17. If all the values of f of x are close to that limit, the values of x that are sufficiently close, but not necessarily equal to a, the limit l, if it exists, must be a unique real number. So we find a couple different ways for notation. So when we write the limit as x approaches a particular place of f of x, we are indicating that x is approaching from both sides. We can also write as x is approaching a, and we say that this negative side indicates that we're approaching from the left side. So we would say um, for this particular example, the limit of x as it approaches 6 from the left side. We can similarly do this, okay, so that is where x is less than, less than the value of a, so the values that are less than 6. We can also approach from the right-hand side, so these are values for which x is greater than that particular number, and we indicate that with a little plus. That leads us to the theorem. That as x approaches a particular number or location, the limit of our function is this is a particular number if it exists from the left and the right, and they are both the same limit. So as we approach from the right and we approach from the left, they have to be equivalent. Then we can just say that as x approaches a particular location, it's equal to 6 or it's equal to L. In the previous example, since the limit as X approached six from the left was equal to 17, and as the limit of X approached six from the right was also 17, we can say that the limit as X approaches six is 17. So our first example, I'm given the function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Find f of 1 if it exists. And what is the limit of f of x as x approaches 1? So we know that f of 1 does not exist because if I were to plug in 1 into our denominator, we would get a 0. So x is not in the domain, so f of 1 does not exist. So let's numerically look at the limit as f of x approaches, or excuse me, as x approaches 1. So I'm going to plug in each one of these numbers from the left. So notice they're getting super close to 1 from the left-hand side. So they're numbers which are less than 1. 
When we do that, we end up with 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. .99. So we're getting close to two. Let's approach x from the right. So numbers that are greater than one, which are 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 1.001. Note that these numbers are arbitrary numbers. They're just not necessarily nice numbers to work with, but obvious numbers that are less than, but very close to the number in question. So we can see that as x is approaching one from the right-hand side, we are also getting close to two. So we select x values close to one on the other side. We see that the function value is getting close to two in both directions. Therefore, the limit of f of x as x is approaching one is two. So we would state that as the limit um, x approaches one of f of x, we reach two. We can also see this graphically, if you were to plug this into decimals, we would have a particular hole at two because the, it does not, uh, is not in our domain, so it would be undefined. But even though the function value is undefined, we still see that we are getting super close to two and we are approaching two. Example two, consider the function h of x, where two x plus two when we have x values less than one and two x minus four for x values that are greater than or equal to one. Graph the function and find the following limit, if they exist, both, both numerically and graphically. So as a reminder, this is how we put um, the piecewise function into decimals, and I have it listed here. I manually put in a hole because it's less than, so this does not, it's not included, so it's excluded from our value. So let's look at A. Let's find the limit as x is approaching one from the left-hand side. So as x is approaching one from the left-hand side, what happens, okay? And since these values are less than one, we're gonna plug in our x values into two x plus two. So I'll take two times 0.9 plus two, which gives me 3.8. I'll take then two times 0.99 times two plus two and get 3.98, and then when I do that for 0 0.999, we get 3.998. So you see we're approaching four, just as the picture shows us that we're doing. Now let's approach one from the left, or excuse me, from the right-hand side. So as we're getting closer to one from the right-hand side, so our x values are larger than one, now we're gonna plug in those values into two x minus four because we're looking at values which are greater than one. So I'll take two times 1.1 .1 minus four, I get negative 1.98 and I'll fill in the rest for the following. I see this time that we are approaching negative two. Well, because we are not approaching from the left and from the right the same number, the limit as x approaches one does not exist. These would have to be the same number it would be approaching in order for the limit to exist. Let's look at the limit as x is approaching negative three. So here's as x is approaching negative three. Let's start from the left-hand side. So numbers that are less than negative three. Let's see what, where we're coming to. So because our values are less than one, that we're plugging in, we're gonna plug them into the top one, two times x plus two. So negative, uh, two times negative 3.1 plus two is negative 4.2, two times negative 3.01, and as we continue, we see we're approaching negative four. That makes sense as we're coming from the left-hand side. We can visually see that. Let's see about coming from the right-hand side. So we're choosing values, that are greater than negative three, but don't be fooled, we're still less than one. Our values are still less than one, so we need to use the two x plus two values here. So as we plug them, I get negative 3.8, negative 
negative 3.98 and negative 3.998 when we plug them in. So again, visually, I see we're approaching four. Since these limits from the left and from the right are approaching the same number, we can say that the limit as x is approaching negative three is equal to, oops, this should say negative four. I apologize. This should be negative four. We're approaching negative four. Example three, let's consider the function g of x equals five when x is equal to one and x plus one when x is not equal to one. So we have a whole at x equals one and because at one we should really have our y value be five as it states above. So there's a hole here and we, we have a little dot up above. It says to graph the function and find the following limits if they exist, both numerically and graphically. So I use this in decimals and just copied it into here for us to use. So let's find the limit as we're approaching one from the left and from the right. And let's see what happens. Um, because these numbers um, are not equal to one that we're plugging in, we can plug them into this bottom one, x plus one. When I take 0 0.9 plus one, et cetera, for the first one, I see that we're approaching two. Let's see what happens when we plug in values when we're approaching one from the right hand side we're still greater than one so we're going to still use the x plus one piece so 1.1 1 .1 plus one is 2.1 1.01 plus one 1.001 plus one aha we're still approaching two so since the limit from the left and the right are both approaching two we can say that the limit as x approaches one is equal to two. It should be noted that we do acknowledge that the limit value is two. However, the function value g of one is equal to five. These are two different items and should not be confused with one another. I know it's difficult. Let's look at the limit as x is approaching negative two. So what happens when we approach negative two from the left and from the right? So when I plug in, so we're still not equal to one, so we're still gonna use the x plus one. So when I plug in negative 2.1 plus one, we get negative 1.1, negative 1.01, and negative 1.001. So I see we're approaching negative one from the left of negative two. Let's plug in values to the right of negative two. We're still not equal to one, so we're still going to use x plus one. So as we plug them in, we get um, negative 1.9 plus one, so negative 0 0.9, negative 0 0.99, and negative 0 0.999. I see that we're also approaching negative one. So we can say because the limit from the left and from the right are both approaching negative one. We can say that as the limit of as x approaches negative two, we are approaching negative one.